What's happening? Joey here. Today, we're going to take a look at the 2018 LG C8 OLED 65-inch TV and how it compares to the 2017 LG B7 65-inch OLED TV. That's a handful. So, last year, gamers were complaining that the LG OLEDs were too dim in game mode HDR. I agree with them. I was one of the quiet complainers. So what I did is I compared the 2018 LG C8 to the 2017 LG B7 game mode with all settings exactly the same and then I toggled the all new feature called dynamic tone mapping on and off to see if I could see any difference because Reportedly, users are saying that the new dynamic tone mapping feature is bringing the brightness back. And I agree with them, kind of. Yeah, let's just take a look. So what we're gonna do here is test the ABL with dynamic tone mapping on to see if it is doing anything to prevent uh, the pullback in brightness. Uh, and it's not, it's uh, ABL is behaving as it always has. Uh, so here we're playing Sea of Thieves on the Xbox One X and HDR is enabled and we are in game mode. So what I'm doing here is looking to see if the dynamic tone mapping uh, is affecting the brightness of the scene. So Sea of Thieves has uh, a wide variety of ambient modes and what I mean by modes is I probably should say ambient scenes because it, it transitions from day to night and night to day. There's thunderstorms, uh, there's beautiful sunsets, sunrises, um, and also, you know, there's starry nights with um, uh, half moons and full moons, etc. So uh, the environment uh, rotates frequently from day to night. So this is a very good game to test out. Uh, dynamic tone mapping. So what I'm doing is I'm wandering around, um, kind of peeking into rooms, looking into the shadows, looking at the beach, looking at the sky, uh, and seeing how uh, dynamic tone mapping affects the overall luminosity or brightness of the game. And so dynamic tone mapping only works if uh, a certain percentage of the screen is dark and bright. So if I walk out here onto the beach, uh, like if I walk out onto the sand, it doesn't really do very much. As you can see here, not a huge effect, but if I walk into the woods and flip it on and off, uh, you can see there's a pretty dramatic difference. Um, it's essentially lifting the shadows. Um, so it does have an effect depending on um, you know, how bright and dark the scene is. Uh, if you're playing a game that is completely bright and it's a, a game where there's a lot of daylight scenes, uh, dynamic tone mapping isn't going to do anything. Um, as you can see here, you can look at the horizon. Uh, there's a slight change um, in the gamma curve, but it's not really doing very much. Um, the biggest benefit is scenes like this, when there's um, wild and, and very stark transitions between dark and light. So look at the pathway here. Uh, you can see that uh, dynamic tone mapping um, has a pretty profound effect. But a scene like this, eh, not really a big change. If you play games that um, look like this, um, you know, it's essentially daylight. You're not going to see a, a big change in brightness on the LG C8. Uh, as you can see right here, it's not doing anything. Um, so really what I'm doing is I'm just running around and, uh, you know, testing out um, the new dynamic tone mapping feature to see um, what type of environment it's going to have an effect on. Uh, again, I think Sea of Thieves is a wonderful game uh, to test out your HDR settings on because it has so many different types of environments. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep wandering around here and um, see what we can learn. As you can see, there's not a huge difference. There's a, a slight 
uh, shift in the clouds, but nothing major. Here, again, not a huge change, but you can see in the grass there's a little bit of a, a lift. Um, what's funny is sometimes it actually um, dims or lowers the luminosity of uh, certain aspects of a scene. So it's hard to predict what dynamic tone mapping is actually going to do. As you can see, it's not doing anything on this beach scene here. Absolutely nothing. This is a good learning experience. Um, this is a new feature, I don't really have any experience with it, so I'm just trying to see what we can see. Pretty dramatic um, boost in some of these interior scenes. Yep, that looks a lot better. That's an improvement. Okay, let's see how the LG C8 compares to the LG B7 with all settings exactly the same playing HDR10 in game mode. So this is game mode HDR playing the exact same video. To me, the B7 looks like it's a little bit brighter in the highlights. Okay, that's interesting. Now let's see how they compare with dynamic tone mapping turned on on the C8. Keep in mind the LG B7 does not have the dynamic tone mapping feature. Um, to me, okay, you can see the sky uh, is a little bit darker on the C8 now. So it's applied, it looks like it's applied an S curve. Okay. Not a huge deal, but clearly there was some change there. So it looks like it's actually um, crushing shadow detail based on what I just saw. All right, let's make sure all the settings are lined up. Um, let's quick double check. All right, I think these are lined up. Close as I can get them anyway. All right, dynamic tone mapping is off on the C8 and all settings are the same. The C8 is on the right and the LG B7 is on the left. They look pretty close to me. Um, not seeing a huge difference here. seeing what I'm seeing I think it almost speaks for itself keep in mind all the settings are exactly the same and dynamic toe mapping is off so this is game mode HDR so most of the processing is disabled on both TVs. I'm not seeing a huge difference, at least not in game mode. So if you're a gamer, this might matter to you. But there's another component to this. Games have metadata baked into them. So I wonder if uh, the metadata could influence the image quality at all. Hmm. Interesting nonetheless, because, you know, this is the 2017 panel compared to the 2018. It is game mode. It is HDR. I don't know. Oh, 
Okay. I guess we will... Hmm. I guess we can go ahead and flip the dynamic tone mapping on. And see if it makes any difference in this exact same video. Alright. Flip it on. So now dynamic tone mapping is on. Let's see if it makes any difference. Yeah, I see a tiny bit of difference. Um, yeah, I can, so the, sh it's funny, the shadow details are lifted. See the trees? Okay. Yep. Yeah, so it's, it's lifting the shadow detail in, in some scenes and it's crushing it in others. That's really interesting. Yeah, I'm looking at the leaves on the trees in a lot of these scenes. It's the most obvious to me. What's really off is... Is it losing color brightness, though? Hmm. Yeah, this scene, that looked better on the C8 for sure. This looks better on the B7. The sun in the background looked better. Uh, the same. Uh, the face of the baboon looks better. Okay. You can see, uh, yep, the shadows are lifted on the temple. Okay. The red highlights on that arch was better on the C8. The tiger's face is a little brighter. Okay. This is some uh, footage ahead of Titanfall 2. This is the LG C8 game mode, HDR off. This is SDR. So let's flip over to the B7, same scene. This is game mode, non-HDR. So we're looking at SDR and game mode. C8 versus B7. And here is Sea of Thieves again, um, it finally turned nighttime, so I just wanted to see real quickly if dynamic contrast had a major effect on the brightness of the scene. It kind of does, um, depends on the scene. And dynamic tone mapping does have a pretty decent effect. Subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you guys get notified when we post a new video. Hey man, which TV do you like the best? Um, well, I like the Q9FN for gaming. I like the LG C8 for Netflix movies. You know, the originals like Altered Carbon. Uh, I like the Q9FN better for sports. I like the LG C8s motion a little bit better. I like the Q9FN for daytime watching better. I like the LG C8 for nighttime watching better. Uh, for PC usage, I like the uh, Samsung Q9FN. For overall streaming experience, I think the LG C8 Thin Q has a better search than the Samsung's Bixby. Um, I like the TV stand better on the Q9FN. I absolutely hate the TV stand on the C8. It's too wide and it's uh, 
very prone to fall backwards. So it's very sturdy, uh, forward facing, but when I, when I go to move it, um, I have to be careful because it will not lean forward, but it will tip over backwards and uh, that caught me off guard. So if uh, a child pushes on it, uh, the C8 is definitely going to take a dive backwards, whereas the, uh, the Q9FN, it ain't going nowhere. Uh, I do love the One Connect box on the Q9FN. It allows me to connect my server and my laptop remotely much easier than having to jockey with an HDMI cord. Uh, on the one side of the LG, which is really annoying. I get a lot more flexibility uh, with the One Connect box when I want to use the um, Q9FN as a monitor. Also, uh, it's easier to uh, route the Q9FN to a receiver. So instead of bringing my home theater receiver to the TV, I can bring the One Connect box to the receiver. And that prevents me from having to purchase a very expensive, long HDMI cable. So I like that. Uh, also, I have a lot more flexibility where I can plug the Q9FN to where I can, you know, plug it into the wall. Love that. Um, I, I don't know. I think the Q9FN is way more flexible and versatile than the LG C8. I think the C8 has a cleaner image, obviously because it has more control, but I think the Q9FN has a more appealing image in a lot of scenes. Whereas, and what I mean when I say appealing is the Q9FN, uh, the highlights are just so daggum interesting. I mean, when the sun rises or the sun sets, especially when I was playing Sea of Thieves, um, it looks like real life. When the moon is reflecting off of the ground or the beach on Sea of Thieves, it is just, uh, I don't know, it just looks really, really amazing on the Q9FN. Um, obviously viewing angles are going to go to the C8, um, but the Q9FN viewing angles don't bother me unless I'm looking up at it. So if I'm looking so if it's mounted high up, I probably wouldn't go with a Q9FN. Um, when it comes to sports, I like the Q9FN better. Um, the dirty screen effect can be annoying depending on what you're playing or watching, but it hasn't stuck out to me yet. The only time I saw it was when I was playing Sea of Thieves, which is basically a torture test for a TV. Hell, it even reveals the banding on our... Uh, or B7 and C7. Um, ooh, I guess if I had to pick one, I would go with the Q9FN. There you go. It's just more versatile. I mean, yeah, the image isn't perfect, but it solves far more use cases than the C8 does. And I'm a very use case driven person. So that said, uh, I think considering the price is the same, you get more bang for your buck with the Q9FN. Um, I mean, good God, those those highlights are just something to behold. Um, it makes SDR look like HDR, similar to the 930E and the Z9D. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think the Q9FN is a more versatile TV. It's not as clean of an image. The picture quality isn't as pristine as the C8, but... Um, you know, I, I think after having a couple of OLEDs and having lived with them for quite some time now, um, you know, there's a, there's a, another thing to, to note. A lot of people won't get to see these side by side, and so they don't really know the true difference between the two TVs unless you see them together. You have to remember, our eyes are dynamic, very dynamic. And so if you have an OLED in the room and only an OLED in the room, your eyes will adjust to the lower brightness. Um, and it's a very pleasing image and a lot of people think it's amazing, myself included. It's only until you get the two in the room together 
and your eyes are trying to adjust to the brightness of both TVs, uh, similar to a sensor on a camera, uh, do you really see the difference? Um, so I played anime and cartoons and older movies. I played SDR, 487, 20, 1080, 4K, 2K. I played 444 content, uncompressed, uh, Blu-rays, uh, Apple TV, 4K. I played everything on both of them. I, I gotta say, um, neither really jump out um, at me, you know, as having um, a far superior image over the other. I just think they're different. I mean, the highlights are way, way better on the Q9FN. It is not even close. However, the C8 has better light control. Obviously, it has no blooming, no halos, no light bleed in the black bars. So the C8, this C8 is devoid of any defects. It is perfect. This is the most perfect OLED panel I have ever seen in my life. There's no vertical banding. There's no nothing. I mean, it is smooth corner to corner. I wonder if I could resell this and make a profit as being the most perfect C8 or most perfect OLED panel ever. I don't I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, the C8 is great. I mean, it's, it's a slight improvement on last year's model. It is not a groundbreaking upgrade. It is not a game changer. Um, I, I think if you have a 2017 OLED, there's really no reason to jump to the 2018 model. Uh, no, I definitely would not. Um, they're about the same. Um, I think the only people that are probably gonna, um, make comments about the improvements of the C8 are, you know, avid dark room, you know, OLED lovers. Um, I myself like a higher, uh, brightness TV. That is not the correct way to say that. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I like to wear sunglasses when I watch TV. I'm probably in the minority, but, um, I gotta say, oh, the C8 image quality is amazing. Um, but, you know, so was the, the 2017 models. They were amazing too. Um, I don't think this is a major upgrade. Uh, I really do love the uh, thin Q though. God, the voice search on the LG is the best I've ever seen. It kills the Samsung uh, Bixby. It is better than Google's voice input on Android TVs. Um, yeah, <laughs> LG ThinQ is the real deal. So if you're a voice control lover, if that's your thing, you definitely want the LG. The LG has the best voice input I've ever seen. Uh, the Samsung has a bunch, there's a bunch of like landmines when it comes to using the <laughs> uh, Bixby. Uh, the Samsung, Bixby just gets it wrong too often. It, it's, it's a little, it's so annoying. I just won't use it. So the voice input on Samsung is not good. The voice input on the LG is flawless so far. It has yet to miss one of my voice searches. So if that's important to you, if you really care about voice search, uh, LG, it's not even close. Uh, and that, I would say that's a significant upgrade from last year because last year's LG's voice input sucked. Um, and this year it's really good. So yeah, there's that. Uh, you know, the coding on the TV looks the same. I don't think they've changed the coding on the C8 compared to the 2017 models. Yeah, the, I mean, the major differences to me um, is it has the dynamic tone mapping feature and black frame insertion. So I did test, uh, test, there's my country accent. I did test the black frame in insertion on the Q9FN and on the LG C8. I don't like either. I can see the blinking, like the, f I can see flickering. It adds flicker and I don't like that. Me personally, I'm sure there's like, you know, seven of you out there that look forward to BFI. Uh, it's not for me. I mean, I, and you can turn BFI on in game mode on the C8. And I did do some gaming on the C8 with BFI on. Didn't bother me. Didn't do anything for me. Um, but I did, you know, it does lower the brightness. Uh, so I turn it off. I don't particularly um, care for it. But if BFI is your thing, it works okay. It's not bad. 
Uh, it's a little more annoying on the Samsung. I think the Samsung's BFI is not very good. Um, you know, that's the pulse width modulation. Um, <laughs> I don't want to call it strategy, but it's it's their method um, compared to um, LG's. And I think LG does a better job at black frame, black frame insertion than Samsung does. Uh, Sony does a very actually Sony does probably the best they're the best at BFI but I, I don't care about it I don't like that it dims the screen so um, yeah if BFI is your thing uh, between the LG and the Samsung LG is what you want uh, sports mm, it's a toss up motion is a little better on the LG slightly uh, but it's it's not night and day just a slight slight bit better um, I watched a couple of uh, playoff games with both of them running side by side and nothing really stuck out to me um, but yeah that's my uh, my thoughts as of today but in, back to the original point of making this video uh, when it concerns gaming um, I'm you know I lean Q9FN input lag is so close on both of them I can hardly tell the difference in the two I think the Q9FN is a little faster uh, now there's one difference on the Q9FN versus the LG the LG only has one feature one motion feature available to you uh, when you're in game mode and that's the ability to turn BFI on LG or Samsung allows you to turn on D judder and D blur. So Samsung has full motion control within game mode and it doesn't add really any lag or any noticeable lag. So if um, if you want motion features in game mode, Samsung is your choice. The Q9FN is between the C8 and the Q9FN, the Q9FN is the only one that has um all the motion controls available in game mode. Um, the Q9FN just seems more geared towards a gamer. If you sit straight on um, and you don't want to worry about burn-in, right? That's the elephant in the room. Um, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I walked away from the Q9FN. I came back like an hour later. No worries. Um, you know, if peace of mind is important to you, you definitely don't want to be gaming on the LG C8, um, well, excuse me, let me back up. You don't want to be a binge gamer on the C8. Uh, now, I didn't see any 2017 official reports of burn-in, um, apart from Arting's tests, which should tell you all you need to know. Um, but yeah. You know, unlike the B6, which I saw a bunch of those with burn-in, I saw a lot of uh, 6 series OLEDs with burn-in. Um, and, you know, I haven't seen any 7 series OLEDs with burn-in, not in person, but, I, you know, a few people have reached out to me and they did let me know that, they, that their panels had issues and I could only, you know, take them at face value or online value, I guess. Uh, so yeah, OLED is still a concern. I mean, you can follow the Arting's burn-in test. It's a real thing. It still exists. So if you want peace of mind, then definitely go the Q9FN route. If you have kids and you think your kids might ha have risky uh, content, if they watch a lot of cartoons with logos and such, uh, you may not want to go the OLED route. I mean... Depends on how high your risk tolerance is. Mine's pretty low. If I had kids watching these TVs, uh, I would only allow them to watch the Q9FN. So if that tells you anything. Um, okay, yeah, let's pick this up later. See you guys later.